Hey everyone, this is Caroline. Welcome. Thanks for, for being with me today. We are broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook and multiple pages on Facebook. So thanks for being here. Um, you are welcome to uh, leave your comments and questions in the chat. And Michael's here with me. Hey, Michael. Hey, Caroline. I'm great today. And uh, so I wanted to talk to you guys, other than the typical stuff, the COVID situation, I don't know how many times we have to rehash this, but it's pretty much the same thing. I just think that at this point, we just have to learn how to reprogram our mind, focus our mind, and uh, just accept that this is uh, the new normal, our new reality, and uh, that we're all in it together and we're all gonna be fine. <laughs> so I wanna talk to you about the film we just opened, what, just a few days ago. I am just so excited. And uh, I wanted to bring a guest today to help me talk about uh, what's happening with the film. So let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, for those of you who know or who have an idea, uh, as a producer, what happens is that you want your film to be picked up. You want your film to be distributed everywhere. But it's not so easy because a lot of distributors will take your film and they'll just kind of, they'll put it out on the platforms, yes, but they won't really do anything with it. And so you're out there trying to promote it and doing all that stuff. And, uh, and it's like you, you don't feel like you have a partner in the game. And so I had like a, a dozen offer, maybe more, when I was still in post-production. And uh, I just didn't like any of the offers. And I said, thanks, but no thanks, <laughs> you know? And I thought I would just go ahead and do it alone, you know, because I thought this film is very special. It's going to be successful. I know it. So I'm just uh, gonna do that. And some people, so some people said, no, 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 no. You have to call this company and you have to call to this, you have to talk to this guy. Uh, Jim Martin. And I'm like, okay, whatever. This is the last one I'm going to try. So I emailed this guy, Jim Martin, like a couple of times, no response. And I'm thinking, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, I'm just going at it alone. And, um, and then Chris, I think it was like Christmas Eve or Christmas day. Um, and I remember because it was Christmas, I get an email from Jim Martin. And I'm thinking, oh, well, it's about time. <laughs> and he said, hey, I want to talk to you about the film. So anyway, I was ready to, to uh, move on anyway. But, but um, I liked what he had to say. And I liked that the fact that he got the material, he understood the material. And before I know it, we are in partnership. And I'm so excited to be working with him. So that's the reason why I wanted to have him on the show today to have him talk to you guys also about uh, why he emailed me on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve or Christmas day. Anyway, whatever, I love it. So I'm gonna bring Jim. Hello, my dear. <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. No, no, we can hear you now. Okay, good, good. Did you hey. hear my intro? I love it. That was so sweet of you. Thank you. That is how it happened, actually. What were you thinking Christmas Eve, Christmas Day? Well, you know, I was actually uh, back home with my family in upstate New York, and I was in my little office, and I saw your trailer on YouTube, actually, as a pre-rolled video ad. And I was so captivated by it and the evidence that you showed, I felt I had to email you in that second and, and try and get in touch with you about your movie. Yay, I'm so glad you did. You know, uh, because for me, as I was, dis you know, kind of uh, explaining, for us as this, you know, producers, we want partners in the game. You know, we don't want just hand off. We just worked on the film for like 
you know, years. Yeah. And then we just kind of give it to a distributor and we have no control. And so what I really loved about you is because you understood the material. But still, from your perspective, I mean, you get offer, you get, you know, not offers, uh, you know, submissions, right? Do you get like a ton? Well, like, well what, why this one? Like what happened? Well, I think it was just the evidence that you demonstrated was so profound to me on a personal level. I had never seen those types of uh, case studies captured on film before with the blindfolds and the telekinesis. I was so just excited and blown away by what you were demonstrating. I felt I had to get in touch with you and be a part of this project. But what about like the subject being so kind of out there in a way? I mean, of course, I don't think so, especially nowadays. I think it's very timely. But uh, were you thinking, how am I going to sell this thing? You know, it's like, well, what, from a you know distributor sales point of view, what do you think about the subject matter? Why did you feel so confident? Well, again, it is a, a more challenging subject matter, uh, the nature of consciousness, the science of consciousness, and how to reach the customer base on that. But again, the way you made your movie and documented the evidence was so clear and so groundbreaking to me that I felt it would really speak for itself. And once the public saw this imagery in these case studies, they'd be absolutely drawn to see it. Yeah. So, uh, so that's good. So you feel like we, um, like you weren't nervous you know getting into these type of topics or anything like that you thought that just in time plus i mean there were precedents right i mean in this kind of films right 100 percent. i mean the whole genre of consciousness and ufos has really had a resurgence over the past few years and your movie is really at the culmination point i would say of this point in time um, but again, I've never seen a movie like yours before. The, what you've demonstrated in a scientific way and also in a way that the viewer can understand, I feel is so unique and so important right now for humanity to see this, see these capabilities that we all have, especially in young children. It motivates me even as an adult that maybe I could learn these types of capabilities. So your movie is an educational tool and obviously an incredible piece of entertainment for the world. Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you yourself interested in like this type of things? Do you feel attracted to, hey, I'm going to try like the blindfolds or something like that? I do. I mean, I wish I was as good as those little kids. Like, I wish I could have been trained as a child doing that. So I'm still very much a beginner. But um, I've been doing telekinesis for a long time, so I'm pretty good at telekinesis. Um, I've been doing, you know, CE5 uh, thought projections. But I really watched your movie and I'm so excited to learn all these new kinds of, um, you know, techniques and capabilities that you demonstrate here. Well, actually, that's what was happening. So when we were filming, uh, Jim, as you know, we have cameras everywhere and we have, you know, sound and equipment and electromagnetic going on and people standing and the PA running around. And we invite people who have never done this before, as you know. Yeah. So, so, so for example, Rachel, we, you know, we bring her in and we teach her telekinesis in like two hours. Wow. And, oh. yeah, literally, literally. And, and, and she, and she, and we started doing it we're rolling. Um, and she, the thing starts to move like crazy. I mean, we were blown away, but what would happen is that the crew, and some of them are like skeptical, like, what are we filming here? Like, you know, right. you know, but when they see somebody who has never done this before, just get in there and, and do this, always the reaction is, I want to learn this. Can I do this? How did she do this? I can, you know, so that's exactly the reaction that I'm hoping for. So, so this is very exciting. So, so what do you think? So we just opened what, like four days ago? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. How, can we tell already how we're doing? What What's uh, from your perspective? How, how does it feel? And do we know what's happening? I think we're off to a great start. Um, we've been steadily climbing up in the iTunes charts right on the first day you went to the top 20. Uh, now you're number 15. I think next week, certainly as we drop the rental, you'll hopefully go to number one. So I think the movie's been on a tear so far. The public's been really excited about it. And I think so far it's just an absolutely great start. So what does it mean for us to be number one 
to become number one very soon. No, let's say yeah. be, to be, let's be, let's be. Yeah. Uh, to be number one on iTunes, like does that change things for us in terms of other platforms or can you talk a little bit about that? Like what's the difference between the different platforms? Because I know like Amazon doesn't have ranking. So what's the importance of being number one on iTunes? Well, it's a great indicator of the documentary's success and interest in the public domain. Um, if you are even in the top 20 documentaries on iTunes, you are essentially performing in the top 1% of all docs in the world. So yeah. It, wow. Yeah. It's a really, it's a good really? kind of demand and excitement. Exactly. Um, wow. And then on Amazon, you know, there are chart rankings, but they they bundle all their products together. So it's not as clear as the iTunes charts, although we're having a fantastic run on Amazon. And I would encourage everyone to please leave reviews on Amazon and iTunes, help us support the movie and get the word out. Yeah, exactly, because I am getting a ton of emails. And also on the Facebook, uh, you know, people uh, send, you know, like, hey, I just saw it. It's incredible. And I'm like, don't tell them. Yeah, I'm glad you're telling me. But tell others, tell others, because we really need this. Um, you know, as you know, you've been saying, this is the type of film that is timely and helpful. I mean, this is about helping humanity, you know, go to the next level. So we really need the public to uh, be out there and post a comment or review or anything like that. So you guys heard it from Jim, go to Amazon, leave your um, <laughs> comment there and um, good. So, and what do you feel like needs to happen now to continue grow the mar I mean the film what do you feel um wh where is it going from here well we're putting out so much content every week and so if for any of you that haven't bought the film already we're releasing tons of promo content from the movie to show you what's in the movie some of the amazing case studies what we're really hoping everyone can do is share these clips help us take this viral this information needs to spread to help educate humanity. So viral is the word to the name of the game here. Viral, viral. You guys uh, uh, pr program yourself. Every time you watch the film, every time you write a review, I want you to think and project viral. We want wisdom and enlightenment and spirituality uh, and information to go viral. So uh, when is the rental starting? Because we there was a change about that and people are confused. So we decided to turn on the rental. Uh, it's actually going to be live Monday night at midnight on all platforms. You'll be able to rent the movie for four ninety nine, and that's going to help us reach a much larger audience for people that don't just want to purchase the movie. Uh, we really hope to encourage the mainstream to come in, view the film, try it out. We we promise you, you will be thrilled with what you see. There's nothing like this that's ever been documented before. This is a very rare occasion in history that you are sharing this uh, information and these techniques with the public. So rent it, try it out, we promise you will be very satisfied with the experience. But actually, I think uh, you had told me that if people purchase it, then they get a bunch of bonus clips. So does that stay on? So like you, know, you have the option rental and, and so every time, even like when the rentals come on, you still have the option to buy and get those bonus clips, right? You won't get them if you rent. That's right. If you buy the movie, you get a huge series of bonus clips and it's all these wonderful extras. So for all you fans that really want to dig into it, learn the deeper details, absolutely buy the movie, check out the bonus content. It is worth it. I bought the movie. I'm trying to learn these techniques. So I would encourage you, please do check out the bonus features. You bought the movie? I did, and of course I did. <laughs> so funny. So guess what? I did too. <laughs> yeah, no, but you know what? I like. I wanted to go through the purchase experience and right. see what it's like. Exactly right. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't free. Was it okay? Or I haven't seen it. <laughs> of course, I, know. I, mean, I haven't seen it. Uh, you know, as I downloaded, and of course, I've seen yeah. it. I know it by heart. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. But also, you know, it's not the kind of movie that you watch once. I mean, like, even I even get um, uh, co comments like, 
this is my third time watching your movie. Oh my God, oh my God. You yeah. know, because first of all, there's a lot of information. Gotcha. It's like packed with information. And, and it's like, what, you know, I kind of want to see this again. And did she just say that, you know, so, so that's a, the, another reason why if you rent it once, you're going to rent it again, For sure. probably For sure. and share it with your friends. So you might as well purchase, but whatever, you know, whatever works, you know, it's, it's all good. We're just saying that it, this is the type of movie it is. It's not a story, a romantic comedy. And then that's it, you know? Hundred percent. You will want to watch this movie over and over again. The case studies are so profound. The blindfold experiments and the children doing the the readings are so incredible. I myself had to buy it just so I could watch it over and over again and try and absorb some of this information. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so what else, D uh, Michael? Do you have questions for us for for me and Jim? Does, does anybody have any comments or questions for us? specific questions yet except where to find it so i've just been dropping links in the facebook pages as well as in the youtube chat so i put in the uh the video link for bonus features as well as amazon and itunes will be up shortly people uh, everyone is really excited we've had several people that have purchased the film and are super uh, super excited about it have watched it several times as you both have mentioned that's so awesome, you know, and some people have, I want to say, um, a, a, a bit of a preconceived idea that, oh, no, is this one of those secret type movie where it's just a bunch of talking heads or something? Or uh, some when people see the clips of the, the blindfold kids, you know? Uh, so sometimes the reaction is, oh, no, this is not gonna work you know but you saw it many people saw it it's just so mind-blowing what we are able to actually prove i mean and this is stuff that we've tried ourselves like for example the blindfolds uh we just did a class actually online uh we just finished it with kids after two classes uh kids were reading with the blindfolds and we know because we're there, we know how the blindfolds are on, we know it's impossible to see. So so I guess what I'm saying is this film is not just talk. I mean, like it's not just rehashing previously covered topics, you know? This yeah, this this actually demonstrates a whole goes to a whole new level with the science. Um, what did you think when you saw like the cast members? Did, did you think, yeah, so sorry, people are still asking about um, which platform. I'm actually surprised um, how people are not, um, I think everybody, if they, if people go to superhumanfilm.com, they will see everything listed there. But um, anyway, tell us, Jim, one more time all the platforms since we have the folks here. So maybe they can go now and buy it. <laughs> the movie is on iTunes worldwide with subtitles and Vimeo. Uh, also Amazon, Google Play, Xbox, PlayStation, Vudu, Fandango, and all the cable systems in the US and Canada. So if you have cable, you can just go into your on-demand section. You'll see Superhuman right there for purchase or rental on Monday night rental. So really any digital store you go to, you will find the film. Um, just check out the Genius Link on Caroline's website and enjoy. And so, so, but this is just for now, right? Because are there going to be other platforms? Some people are asking or like, uh, how does it work? So that's correct. Right now the movie is available for purchase and rental, um, but there will come a point in a few months where we'll move the movie towards streaming into a streaming platform. Most likely it will be on Amazon Prime and some of the AVOD networks like Pluto TV or Zumo and Tubi. We really just want to put the film out as broadly as possible, reach as many people as we can with this information. So if you're interested in buying or renting the movie, uh, please do so now. But coming down the line, you will see it on the streaming platform so we can reach a much broader audience. Yeah, and so I know we've gotten some uh, questions that we can't, they can't find sometimes the bonus clips after they purchase the film. Yeah. So that, so does it depend on the platform or like where is it like a separate file or how does that work? 
So good question. Now, uh, the iTunes Store and Vimeo are the only digital stores that allow us to sell bonus features. So if you're really interested in bonus features, go to iTunes and Vimeo. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Amazon and Google Play and Xbox, they don't offer bonus features yet. They'll just offer the movie. But if that's your preferred platform, please enjoy it there. Uh, but I would encourage you to check out the bonus features. They're rich, really fascinating. And I myself uh, bought the movie just to watch them. Okay, so you guys heard it, iTunes and Vimeo. iTunes and Vimeo if you want to get the bonus. Cause I didn't know that, so I'm so glad you clarified this. Yeah. So, um, okay, this is super cool. Uh, what else, Michael? Do you have any other uh, questions for us? I do. I have a question and a couple comments, but let's get to the question first. Okay. This is for you, Caroline. Ooh. Do you feel that this movie is timely? given the pandemic and given other stresses on humanity right now? Absolutely. I mean, I actually, you know, when we were going to launch it earlier uh, on my own before Jim came along, and I'm so glad you came. <laughs> you. But at the time, it was before the whole COVID thing, although I could see the world starting to become weird. But, and so, um, so anyway, I felt like, had we it's so funny how things happen you know because had we uh released it then we would have been bombarded with um social media and news distracting from you know the film and now that we're releasing it at this point in the pandemic and in the world crisis whatever is going on it's almost perfectly timely you see how it's like divine timing. And it's because, uh, the first of all, we now for a few months are being bombarded with uh, the, all the negative stuff, how we have to um, readjust our whole life and you know deal with uh, changing the way we, we work, the way we function. And so people are still kind of trying to figure it out. There's a lot of emotional, um, mental, uh, spiritual confusion um, that people are going through because of the situation. So in a way, this is actually the perfect timing to, as a reminder that yes, wait, this there is a mess out there. It's a huge mess and it's not about to be done. Yeah. You know, you keep asking me, are we going back to normal? No, it's mm -hmm. impossible to go back to normal. We're going to go back to another form of normal, maybe, perhaps. It's going to continue evolving into, into the next thing, the next thing. And so that's the reason why this film helps you remember, wait, there's something I can do right now uh, to shift at least um, my consciousness, you know, my focus, my, um, my perception, um, about how I'm gonna go about my life moving forward. So this film is not just empowering, uh, but offers tools like, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, it's a huge reminder, wake up call that look at these kids uh, doing this with the blindfolds. Look at this, uh, the water, the, the, um, the, the experiment we did with the water, uh, focusing on the water to change the pH. This is huge. Because if you can do this with water, you can do this on your body and your body is mostly made with water. You know very well that an alkaline body cannot uh, keep, cannot have viruses and bacteria, but viruses and bacteria do not survive in an alkaline environment. So why not just try? It's free. Your mind is free, by the way, you know? It's, it's you and you. So the film, I feel, offers practical tools and validation and uh, reminders that are perfect for this time. That was a long answer, but... I think it was <laughs> but very well articulated, and I agree. You know, learn these techniques, learn the power of mind. It will serve you during this crisis, and we all have a moment to ponder and reflect what's going on, reflect on what's going on in life. And I myself finally have time to kind of learn some of these these uh, protocols and trying to use my own mind to better my situation during this crisis. So well said. I was going to say, how are you dealing with this? Does it change anything 
from a business point of view, first of all, since we're doing this in like a, for distribution or anything, or is it actually better for you guys? Because now people are stuck at home. How, how does it affect you and film distribution? Films that have come to market during this crisis have had an advantage to some extent. People are at home, the entertainment is scarce on the platform. So anything that's truly good that comes out right now gets a lot of attention. So I actually think it's a wonderful time to release this movie. As crazy as it sounds, I think this may be the divine moment that this information was meant to hit the public sphere. Did you guys hear this? The divine moment. All right, say it again. <laughs> it is a divine moment. I, I do believe in that. I believe that this moment, um, you know, is meant to be, and that this information uh, was meant for this time. So I'm very happy about these events coming together. Wow, I love it. It's so awesome. Um, yeah, and and what about you personally? Like, did you also go through like a weird time of of uh, you know? Oh, I don't go to the office anymore. Uh, but did that change anything on a personal level for you? Because people relate to that, I think. Totally. I mean, my whole schedule was turned upside down once the coronavirus hit. I no longer could go to the office. I wasn't doing business meetings anymore. So I was really just confined in my house, which was a good <laughs> thing for me. Uh, but I'm someone who likes to focus, who likes to buckle down and immerse myself in the content. So honestly, this has been an opportune moment for me to learn more about your content, about this evidence, and to try and expand my own consciousness and how I deliver that and help you with this distribution, so. That's great. So has this film actually helped you also personally? Like, I know you're curious about the blindfold, but did it, do you feel, because I'm always interested in that, a lot of people respond, like I just felt something or I experienced something, you know, did it do anything like that for you? I'm curious. Yeah, I know we're really business I partners, it. but still, yeah. like yeah. I always like to ask these questions. For sure. I mean, the most thing I felt was, oh my gosh, why wasn't I taught these things at like birth, right? Like these other kids, here I am, I'm, I'm an adult and I'm trying to catch up to a, a 10 year old that can read with a blindfold on. So that was my first impression. But no, it inspires me to believe that, you know, there is more here than we've been taught, that our minds are more powerful than we've been led to believe. And, and for me, that's a very hopeful message, uh, even as an adult right now. Because I think you're also quite sensitive. I know you are into, you know, you uh, see UFOs, you, you know, you, you're, you connect with them. So that's another reason why I was attracted to working with you, because if you are at least open to it and, you know, kind of into it, mm -hmm. that means that you have that sensitivity, which is not always the case in the business world and of distribution. So sure. Yeah, I mean, we've been very fortunate here. I myself am a UFO videographer and experiencer, and so the clients I work with tend to be in this same genre, in the same frequency. Um, but I will admit, I've never come across anything like you or like your movie or this evidence. So for me, this is new territory and highly exciting. So I'm very, very happy to be here at this moment. Yay! Did you guys hear this? Mm -hmm. Never, be, never seen before. Now you've been in the business how many years? I've been doing digital distribution for almost 14 years now, a very long time. So these movies only come along once in a great while. When they do, you have to put everything into it because it's very important information. I love this. Uh, Michael, what else you got for us? We have one more question for you here in Facebook. Catherine wants to know, Carolyn, what's the most important thing that you would want us to do with the film in terms of our individual movement within the divine plan. Whoa. Okay, so again, the, to me, the film is just another platform. You guys have been doing classes, reading the books, um, doing the healing sessions and all that stuff. So the film is just another platform that we can use. The film is for you because you're the ones who have been doing this work without you know, validation. So it's almost like you can use this film to support your work. You know, you know, when you go out and try to do energy medicine or astrology or whatever you guys are doing, you can now say, by the way, you know, this film proves or validates everything that we're working on here with your clients. So you can use it to increase your a clientele and to expand your work, right, Jim? Yep, 
Absolutely. And I'd like to ask you, what do you think are some of the techniques and case studies that uh, would most benefit people right now in this time of crisis? There's so many different kinds of evidence you display. What can the, the common man or woman learn the more simpler techniques to help us during this time? Well, I think the the first thing is is the meditation. Now, again, I always say uh, not all meditations are created equal uh, because, you know, people do mindfulness or transcendental meditation or whatever. I started out 20 years ago and I said, so wait, like, what's the difference? Like, why? Like these people are saying they are, they feel they're part of the universe and these people feel like they're connected to, you know, whatever. How do I know that? Like, how do they know that? What is the frame of reference? So I researched and investigated this for a long time and experienced so many different things that I realized that the different meditations actually do different things. That's why I created a new meditation that I called connecting to source. Ooh. And that meditation is very specific. And I made it so easy, so simple. Um, I made a version of it that's only seven minutes long. So it's very easy. Okay. And all, and what it does is that it aligns your brain channels very specifically with the very specific points within the universe. Ooh. And it raises your vibration like right away. And it also kind of shields your energy, which is something that we definitely need uh, nowadays, being bombarded with all the negative stuff. And even as you go about your physical life, you I guarantee you go to Costco and you come out with a few attachments on your spine. Or, <laughs> like, but it's the truth. And so I feel that that is the first thing that you have to do. And do an a, um, energetic uh, hygiene is what I call. You know, it just flushes you out mm. from all this other stuff. So That's great advice. That makes perfect sense. Start with the meditation, go from there. That's and, great advice. Yeah. And then from there, there is a specific exercise uh, that is based on zero points that I taught, that I teach, but I just taught it in the series that then allows you to, to, to center so you can, that you can focus your, your mind on a target. That's how you can do telekinesis. That's how you can do. Uh, you know, change the water pH or whatever. And so that technique also we just taught in the uh, the series Superhuman. It's it's on the website as well. And it's basically aligning specific zero points, one uh, at the center of your brain, behind your heart, behind your navel, and um, you achieve perfect stillness. And uh, then you can then focus on the target and make it move or affect it any way you want. Incredible. Incredible. So let, let me let me ask you a question about telekinesis because I've been doing this for a while too. Do you find that is it is it more successful when you let go and you kind of clear your field like you said? The more I try, the more I try and force it, the less it works. Do you have any comments on on telekinesis? Yeah, actually, it's very interesting because I started working like uh, with the scientists before the movie, like really? three years before with water and DNA. And that like was so different. It responded very, very quickly. Like I would just think it, it would happen. Wow. And, yeah, it was so cool. Then I worked with electronic devices and electrical devices and I started affecting them with, you know, with my mind in, uh, and also long distance. And so, and those also responded very differently. It's almost like then the water, like it's almost like I would tell it to, to, to shift. And it's almost like I was making, I was forcing it to shift. Like I was forcing the, the electrical device to do this. Wow. So that was very different. But then when I got to spoon bending and, you know, telekinesis moving a piece of paper or it, it was so bizarre because it was like, it was like, uh, I was, it was like, it had an ego. It was like, okay, I want you to move. And it would tell me, cause you know, like energetically, it would tell me, I'm not going to move. <laughs> yeah, it's like, right. It's like, or I'm not ready yet. Or like, you know, it's, it was so bizarre. So then, you know, you learn to kind of you, you know, do it with objects, physical object that is, it's very different. So with the physical object, as soon as you let go, 
you just kind of like say, okay, whatever. It happens. It happens. How, so interesting. How interesting. So I've noticed one of the most impressive case studies in your movie was where you did TK at great distances and still affected the results. Can you talk just a little bit about that process? Yeah. So because a lot of the scientists actually um, are all over, I worked with folks in Harvard. So they're in Boston. Others are in Oregon. Others are in California, but not where I am. Uh, you know, so so anyway, I had to do a lot of things remotely before I did them in person. One of them was the telekinesis with the paste piece of paper. I do, I've done other stuff. But so so this one scientist said, um, well, can you move this piece of paper, this spiral piece of paper? It's under glass, it's sealed. I won't be there, nothing, you know, and there's nothing going on there. And I said, well, I've never done it before, like long distance. I don't know, you know, so I'll give it a try. So, so anyway, exactly, of course, um, you know, you, you take measurements and you, for a long time before you see it's not moving, it's not moving, it's not moving. And then exactly at the time where, you know, you try to influence it, this is where you, you measure it again. And so, so I tried it and that first time, I think it moved about like three degrees, which is not a lot, you know? And then, so, but then I, then I was like, wait a minute, three degrees, like a long distance, like, you know, yeah. it should be no degrees. Right? That's true. Yeah. It's, it's, so, so that kind of got me thinking like, wait, I can do this. So that was like three years ago, whenever. So then I started doing it and all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> wow. And wow. then I, and then we got we then we got it to make it to be to making it even more complicated. First, it was just a spiral piece of paper covered. Then it was under vacuum. Then it was I mean it was like gradually more and more and more intense. And you saw in the film, I was able to like. <laughs> Incredible! I, I've never seen that demonstrated, particularly at long distance. That was truly profound. Did you get better at the technique? Was there was there certain things you did to? help influence it more successfully than others? Did you visualize it? How did you approach that from a long distance standpoint? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, that's true. You know, I kept thinking, does anybody do it long distance? I don't know if I've seen telekinesis long distance with the vacuum, by the way. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. know, and then also with the, like the way we measure the baseline for a long time, like it's very strict. It's not just like randomly, because then how do you know that you're the one who did it? And so... So yeah, I would love to know if anybody knows you guys, any, anybody who, who did this long distance, let me know. Otherwise, so f as far as I know, it's the first one in, in film format, at least for sure. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, so what happened is I started to feel like, do I need to look at the screen? Because don't forget, it's, it's not in the room, right? So it's like, right. it's in Oregon, I'm in California at the time. And so, so do I look at the screen? Mm, to make it move, right. that did feel good. Oh, do I close my eyes? Do I like? Do I pretend it's here and make it move? But you know, so I had to kind of like maneuver, um, and then eventually I realized that it didn't really matter. I could look. I would look at it first, and then that's it. I had that visual, yes. and then I could just. And the most important thing was for me to get my energy up. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I remember like when I would just like have fun, like I would play music or something, you know, and then I would be on the phone with one of the scientists. Um, and then I would, you know, just kind of getting pumped up, you know, mm -hmm. and the thing would be like, <laughs> wow. Okay. So you raise up your energy. Yeah. Let's go be in a high frequency state. Yeah. Really great tips. Emotional energy like it's almost like being joyful and having fun not just like right. mm, you know like that right. not not that i mean that's good too but i'm just saying i noticed with me that that's when it worked the best i felt like i'm i'm like dancing with it i'm just having fun with it like we're playing together how interesting that's isn't that fun that's a great analogy. Have fun with it. Don't be so serious. Exactly. And and the DNA, it's like you don't even have time. Like it 
you're it. It's like you and the DNA and the water are one. And so whatever I feel, it just does. It's in, it's a different feeling, which is amazing too. Incredible. So, yeah. So about some of the properties of water. I've done telekinesis in water before where I'll fill a bowl of water, then I'll put ping pong balls floating in the water, and then I can move them fairly easy, almost easier than a side wheel. Why would you say that is? Is there something about water that enhances our consciousness and moves things along? What are your thoughts there? Well, it's resonance because you're made of water. Okay. So it's almost like you're you're in your you have water in your body and water in in the bottle. I mean, mm. in the glass. Right. So it's almost like there's two of you. You know what I mean? Cool. They're in resonance with each other. That's what I feel could be happening. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's fascinating. Tell us about that. <laughs> uh, you know, I had seen someone on YouTube, a guy named Trevor Seven. He does a lot of small scale telekinesis. And I had seen him put things in bowls of water and influence them pretty mm -hmm. greatly. So I tried it myself and I, I found it surprisingly easier to move objects when they're on water than when they're not. So, oh, but then how do you know it's not? Uh, I see. So I see. Yeah. We'll see what I just taught this class and we talked about uh, uncertainty. So, mm -hmm. You okay. want to decrease the amount of uncertainty. And with the water being buoyant, you know, like the, the physical object being buoyant in mm. water, uh, you are decreasing the level of uncertainty, whereas it, whereas it compared with air, right. you know, nothing, uh, you know, uh, to, to help it kind of, you know, move. So that's probably the reason why. Okay, so next step for you is yeah. no water. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I know, I'm not quite sure yet, but the more I practice these skills, a friend of mine, Adam Curry, always told me, the more feedback you get on phenomenon, the better you tend to get at it. As you see, I can do it, the quicker you learn. Exactly, and, and the, all of this is about like I was saying earlier, like the, the spoon or whatever, mm. it's about, it's about um, figuring out what you did to make it happen. Okay. It's not about the spoon, it's not about the water, it's about how did I do this? Uh, what did I learn about myself? And this is what this is about. This is what the work is about. Because if I did it with a piece of, water, a piece of paper, you know, a thousand miles away, then I can do it. That's yeah. number one. Well, okay, let me try it with water. Yeah. Let me try it on my body. Let me try it this. And you see what I mean? Like you start to, whatever you did here, you take it there. And that's exactly the purpose of the film. Incredible. And do you think that um, right now, these are very profound new concepts. <clears throat> do you see a point in the next decade or two decades where this will be commonplace or science that is better understood by the mainstream? I mean, I hope so. Honestly, like between you and me, like what you're saying, it's like for me, it's been the story of my whole life. Yeah. I, when people say it's out there, I don't get it. Like what's out there? Like yeah. that's what your mind does. You know, it's very bizarre for me that people haven't caught on. But I also remember like 20 years ago, whenever like I was in LA and I would tell people like, I'm going to, it was at the time it was Mrs. Gucci's. I don't know if you know, you weren't in LA, you're in New York. But yeah. anyway, that was before Whole Foods. There, oh, okay. was a small, there was a small organic store called Mrs. Gucci's. Okay. Probably the only one. Uh, and it was like a soup, the first like supermarket that had all like vegan food and organic food and, you know. And so I would go there all the time. And like I said, at the time, maybe more than, I don't know, whatever, I was young. Anyway, so so then people would be like rolling their eyes, like, okay, whatever, her, you know, her <laughs> organic food and her yoga, whatever. Sure. They'd be making fun of me. And oh. of course I didn't care, but... So, but the point is, the point is, um, the, uh, 20 years later or whenever, uh, now every street corner, as you well know, in LA has like yoga, meditation, vegan this, whole foods that, blah, blah, blah. So what you just asked, like, do you think, I think we should have been there <laughs> by now, right. but I totally see that happening. Good. Especially with young kids. I see that like catching on, like, hey, it's about time. And it has this superhero, a bit, you know, kind of sexy thing about it. It does, yeah. yeah you yeah. know what I mean? Like people would 
it's a different angle than the new age yes. angle, I hope. And that's the point of the film, bringing the science that I hope people will catch on. 100%. And that's what I love about your movie so much is it is demonstrated yeah. by facts, visual evidence, and by demonstration. And there's... Uh oh, he's frozen. Is he frozen? We might have lost Jim. Yeah. So, okay, well, uh, while we're doing this, uh, is, are there any other questions or comments or anything? Um, I do have one comment after your story. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Gooch's Natural Food Markets was purchased by Whole Foods Market in 1993 for oh. a whopping $56 million deal. So wow. they got their start. Yeah, so, there yeah. you go. There you go. 1993, that's more than 20. Well, whatever. Anyway, I remember like, and and like all my friends were rolling their eyes and you know, whatever. So look what happens now, $56 million by Whole Foods. And we know what Whole Foods is about now. So yes, is this the future? I hope so. It's like so about time, you know? It is, and I hope, you know, do you think they'll teach this in schools? I mean, I wish when I was a kid, someone would have taught me this at a young age. So being an adult, I could have worked on this my whole life. I almost feel like, you know, these kids have such a blessing, such an advantage that I didn't have now having this information. And certainly this movie is why this is so important to demonstrate this. And, and visual film is the best way to influence a large amounts of people. So I really hope we do get to that point. Exactly. And I'm so grateful to you. I'm saying it in public now. I told him like a hundred times because you are doing your share, you know, being in the business of distributing the information. Um, it's like, you know, we need you to also bring that to the world. Like we're teaching as much as we can. We're talking about it, you know, as much as we can, you know, for the past 20 years, like teaching, teaching, writing books, lecturing, writing articles, but the film is so important. And so I'm so grateful that you are allowing that whole new level of awareness. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And thank you for letting me be part of this opportunity and this experience to share this information. And I really believe this movie will move the needle. So please check it out, download it or rent it, look for it in the streaming platforms. Once you see this once, it will change your consciousness, how you view the world. That's what happened to me when I saw these demonstrations. And I want to thank you, Caroline, for putting this out, putting the time and energy into delivering this piece of content to the world. Well, anyway, I think we're a great team because we're all, we have also Michael doing the marketing. We have other people on our team. So we're super excited. So Jim, thanks so much for coming and sharing all this fun stuff with us. My pleasure. So, Thank yeah. you. So I'll talk to you later. I'll be texting you as you know. Very good. good luck Text with your next interview. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. Okay. So uh, you guys, you saw it. Uh, this is, um, J Jim Martin from our distribution company. Uh, he's doing his share and helping raise consciousness and awareness. Please send, um, share your comments on Amazon because we want other people to see the film. Uh, it is available now on, um, on uh, iTunes, uh, Vimeo, all the platforms. Just go to superhumanfilm.com. They're all listed there but especially your comments, because this is how new people who have never seen the film are going to read the comments and go, oh, I must see the film. And I am I so hope that also the film is helping you, not just on a personal level, like we've been saying how to deal and cope with all this madness, but also your work, uh, whatever, if you're doing any energy work or any sort of meditation work or whatever, I'm hoping that you can use this film as, um, again, more validation um, to help you continue with your work. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to take a quick break and then I'm going to come back uh, with an amazing person that I love. Her name is Rachel. Uh, so I'll see you in a few minutes back here on YouTube and all the 
Facebook channels. See you soon. Thanks so much.